and welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where we're going to be taking on a puzzle with <laughs> maybe my favourite name in recent times. It's called Castle Woku, <laughs> um, which I guess means it is a hybrid puzzle of, um, of the logic type Castle Wall and Sudoku. Put those together, you get the portmanteau Castle Woku. It's by, it's by Vessel Strikestra. And I have done a few puzzles by Vessel before on the channel, and they've always been absolutely brilliant. Um, and in fact, the most recent one, I want to say, was it a Yagelin Sudoku hybrid? I think, I think it was, and it was gorgeous. This one has a 100% approval rating on Logic Masters Germany, four stars out of five for difficulty. So it's probably quite tricky, but it ought to be magnificent. Um, and I'll read you the rules, which are interesting indeed in a moment or two. Um, before that, what can I tell you about? We have got, uh, we're going to be streaming tomorrow. We're going to be streaming, streaming a game called Teiji, this one, um, which apparently is like the new, uh, the new Witness, um, which is a, was a brilliant game I enjoyed on the channel. Uh, a few months back. Um, at 10 o'clock UK time, we'd love to have your company if you're around. Um, other than that, what else is there? Oh, well, mainly the other news actually is about what's going on over on Patreon at the moment. We've got loads of stuff, loads of magnificent puzzle stuff. Uh, we've got my solve of this puzzle. This puzzle is magnificent it's by Magnus Josephson. The feedback so far is that it's a really cool puzzle, but the rule set is quite it's quite unusual. So Patreon is probably a good place for that because you really have to be into your sort of castle wall stroke yin yang stuff um, if, if you're going to be attempting that one, uh, which I did and I loved. Um, other than that, we've got, of course, the Fistmafell hunt. And I've got some more names for you of successful solvers. And we've got Jay Dyer's hunt, which is uh, the monthly reward for the new year for, for January, January 2023. Um, it's called Numeric Alchemy. Let me show you the picture because I like it. The quest to turn digits into gold. And many of you, well, I tell you, a lo hundreds and hundreds of you have managed to solve five puzzles. We haven't had and a huge number of people who've solved all the puzzles. And that's of no surprise to me, probably around 18 to 20 uh, uh, only at the moment. So that shows you how challenging some of the later puzzles are in Jay's hunt. Now, if you are trying the puzzles, whether you're trying the early puzzles or the late puzzles and you get stuck, there is help available. I don't know how many of our patrons realize this, but over on the Patreon, um, over on the fan Discord server, the CTC Discord server, there is a Patreon only chat channel where, well, Jay, Jay herself might even hang out in that occasionally. So there's loads of help available from other friendly patrons and also from the setters often um, if you do get stuck. Uh, now let's have a look at, oh no, haven't read out the names. Oh, haven't done the birthdays either. I'm having a total nightmare. I don't even know if I've got any birthdays to do today. I must check. Sorry, sorry. It's it's a real um. It's it, it can be a dramatic issue if I forget to do the birthdays. So let me check. No, Tuesday. I've got no birthdays to do. Wow. Okay. Nobody. Nobody. No, I definitely don't. I've got nothing in my diary. No birthdays. All right, but I do have some names of successful solvers of the Vistamafell hunt, which is also going on on, on Patreon at the moment until the 10th of January. So very well done to Triple Three Ears, Mike Daniels, Jamil Hyder Ahmad, Jeff Lynn, Christopher Johnson, Sandy Etherton, Emily Freebairn and Michael Diamond, Riddy Danawat, Jay Redden, it could be Jai Redden, actually. Mm, I don't know. One of those. Um, Barbara Kirkova, Dirk Van Bergen, Morris K Kohler, uh, Ned Bartlett, Grothar, Diederik P and Jamie Stearns. You all sent in the correct entries. Very well done indeed. Now, let us tackle Castle Woku and see what Vessel Strikestra has got in store for us. These are the rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Draw a non-intersecting loop through the centers of some cells. The loop may not enter colored cells that contain a green, gray, or black square. Okay, so these cells don't have loop in them. That's at least something. Green squares, that's two of those, must lie inside the loop. 
black squares must lie outside the loop and grey squares may either be inside or outside the loop. The solver must discover which. The digit in a coloured square represents the number of times the loop cuts a cell border in one direction, north, south, east or west. Directions and values of all coloured square clues must be determined if not given right. OK, so imagine that was a three, I was going to say. That shows up rather prettily. You can see there's an arrow north from here. So I think that means that the loop would cut three cell borders in this direction. So one, two, three. So that actually looks very, very possible. Imagine this was a lower number. Imagine that was a two. Um, then it would be saying, well, actually, then, then there's an ambiguity. It could be two different loop segments, couldn't it, like that? Or it could be two continuous loop segments like this and like that or something like that. Um, so we're not going to know. And lots of these clues have no arrows, so we're going to have to not only work out the number that goes in them, but the direction that they're facing. So that's going to be a challenge. Uh, a clue outside a row gives the sum of the digits on the closest horizontal loop segment passing through its row, including the cells in which the loop turns. Likewise for columns and vertical segments. Good grief, right. So what this is saying is, I'm trying to think of a, or look for a good example of this. Let's look at this 20 clue. Um, so somewhere, let's say somewhere in that sequence, there will be a run of cells. Let's, let's say we worked out the loop did that. Um, then you can see that the this loop segment here is the first loop segment that would be that would it's the closest horizontal loop segment to this 20 clue so those three digits would sum to 20 is i think how that would work let's do a column example so let's say those three cells uh, or let's say the loop did that that would be saying that these three cells here sum to 18. Um, so it's very much in the spirit of Castle Wall with these sort of loop segment clues uh, or very much a focus on cell cuttings of cell borders. And I appreciate if you've not seen Castle Wall before, this rule set may seem very strange. Um, but I know many of you will be have been following the channel long enough to know exactly how this is likely to work. Um, I suppose just one other thing that occurs to me, I always have the pen tool turned on. If you click the cog icon, if you're playing the puzzle and you're thinking, how's Simon drawing loops in the puzzle? It's because I always have this thing called enable pen tool on. Um, so make sure you have your pen tool on because it will allow you to draw these beautiful loops. Sven, the programmer we work with, has uh, has enabled this tool and it's absolutely brilliant because it allows us to play so many different types of puzzles that would otherwise be very challenging to present in the software. Um, but do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking and let's see if we can crack Castle Woku. Um, now, the first thing I'm thinking about here is that well, OK, this is a tiny point, but I'm going to make it anyway. The loop must go through there, I'm going to claim. And that's because this cell is green and therefore it's inside the loop. That cell is black and therefore it's outside the loop. Um, so the loop must must differentiate between those two states of the world. So it must come through this alleyway here. Um, now. The other thing that occurs to me is how big can this clue be? There are one, two, there are only, yeah, there are only three cell borders um, in this direction. So you can see this arrow is pointing this way. So we have to count how many times cell borders get cut by the loop in this direction. Well, it could only be three cell borders. So that must be a one, two or a three. What about that one? That's looking horizontally. So one, two, three, that could be as high as a four. Um, 
<laughs> oh dear. <laughs> That's quickly come to... Well, okay, no, hang on. That is green, so it's inside the loop. So the loop must must circle that cell. Um, and the loop... Right, the loop cannot cross that boundary, can it? Because if it did, it would be saying that one of these black circles was on one side of the loop and one or black squares was on one side of the loop the other was on the other side of the loop and that's not going to work because both of these need to be outside the loop so that's not going to be available as a junction the loop yeah okay and the loop cannot go down here because then that would be again implying that this black square is inside the loop so we can start to pinpoint a few th ah right now that cell is in the loop I don't know I don't know whether it we come to that cell from above or the side but that cells in the loop and that's because again I need to make sure that this is outside the loop whereas this is inside the loop and the only way of doing that is if basically the loop cuts uh, it's got to travel through this cell um, but the problem here is or the, the problem i love the, love the way i managed to reduce that to the singular rather than the plural whereas actually i suspect there are a multitude of issues but this is inside the loop so the loop must either it, it must come somewhere through through the top of the grid here because in order to make, you know, what I'm thinking is the loop's going to have to do something like that. Obviously not that, because that's got diagonals in it, but something like that to get round this segment. Now, the, the, the problem I was envisaging is that many of these squares are grey, and therefore I don't know whether they're in or out of the loop. The central cell of the grid is... Well, what we can't do is something like this. We can't differentiate this black cell from this black cell they both have to be on the same side of the loop so we're not going to be able to draw something like that but we probably could do something like this um, okay so maybe what we have to do is to think about the numbers then <laughs> or maybe it's not oh that's interesting. There are two clues in column three that are both six. So, mm, okay, that's that raises questions, doesn't it? Because that suggests either there are, you know, there could be a loop segment here and a loop segment there, and then one of those would be a one five, one of those would be a two four, or these sixes are referring to the same two cell sequence somewhere in the column and there's only one there's only one vertical um, sort of cut of a border in this in this column I don't know I don't think at this juncture we're going to be able to work that out oh 12 and 11 in the central row so those five cells there are the only places where we can have horizontal cuts yeah okay but the problem there is we could just have a single cut a single cut of a border which would allow us to sum two cells only to the totals so what we can't have here is a single string because that would be saying that this string simultaneously needs to sum to 12 and 11 and that's not going to work and it also is going to go through the central alleyway which it can't because of the black the black squares what is it i'm missing here there must there must be some way of starting the puzzle um i've got a 12 here and a 20 here they that that's quite big no that's not good enough i, I was thinking does that mean i have to have a horizontal segment in this stretch but no i could have a, a sort of one cut there and then three cuts that or three cells there these three could add up to 20 those two could add up to 12 32 in five cells is very possible because the maximum 
for 5 cells would be 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9 and that adds up to 35. And all of this results in the need to say bobbins. Um, maybe, oh I know what it might be. Maybe it's to do with the actual values we can put in the clue cells because it's very symmetrical actually, isn't it? I was, well, let me think about that. This one, if it's looking to the east, one, two, three, four, no, that can be as many as five. Okay, that's, so perhaps this is not sensible. What about that one? If this looks south, one, two, three, four. It can only get three if it looks west. Right, so that's one, two, three, or four. This one, one, two, three, four again. One, two, three, four. So that one I think is one, two, three, or four. This one, I think it looks like it's gonna pick up. Oh, but it can't pick up that many going west, can it? Because the 11 clue. Is, is what it's going to be counting. So that must only be three, well, two loop segments going that way. Because if it cut three, the 12 clue couldn't be filled. Because the 12 clue must, must. That's right, isn't it? Let me, I'm now questioning myself, but yeah, that is right. I can cut two and one in some order, or one and one, but I can't. If I go west, I can't cut more than two from this one, but I could cut three going downwards. Okay, so that's one, two, or three. This one, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, boppins. That one, probably loads north. One, two, three, that's at least a four. Probably can't be higher than four. And these two in the middle, I probably should have started with these because I guess if they're in the middle, they can't see that much on any in any one direction. But look, one, two, no, that can be a four, I think, in that direction or that direction. And this one here can be a four vertically. Oh, no, that's no good at all. That is no good at all. No, <laughs> that's just not it, is it? Right. Um... Okay. So maybe I've got to do more thinking about how the loop grows. The loop's going to go through here. So, right, okay. So I'm going to argue, I hope correctly, that that must be inside the loop. It must effectively be a green cell. And the reason for that is if this was outside the loop, then we couldn't have a loop segment going through this juncture here. So once we turn through here, we're going to have two loop segments entering this area of the grid. And if this is black, both those loop segments would have to come along here or we'd have to have the loop closing and the loop can't close because we know there's a loop segment up there. Do we know there's a loop segment up there? Yes we do because the green and the black need differentiating don't they? So in fact this is in, in effect a green cell which means that the loop must include that so the loop goes along the bottom of the grid. It also means that the section of loop that comes through this cell has to divide along there and has to go through this little junction because that's the only way it can escape and we must differentiate the black cell here from the green cell here. Ah, so at least we've got something. But I think this one, you know, that could duck in here, couldn't it? And it can still escape depending on what colour this is. Ah, okay. So it's the same in the top of the grid. So this little loop, this, this loop segment here is going to wend its way around the top of the grid. And that means if, if I highlight, can I, oh no, I'm, what I want to do is to shade some cells. If I shade 
these cells, you can see that there are two loop ends at the moment. There's this loop end and there's this loop end that live within those 16 cells. Now we know that those loop ends don't meet each other within that four by four, because if they meet each other, the, the loop closes. There's got to be one loop, not many loops. So both loop ends have to get out of this area. How do we achieve that? Given that we can't go through the middle, we can't, we can't go through cells that are the same color. So the only way of getting two loop segments out of the top of the grid look is going to have one of them is going to go through there and one of them is going to go through there. There's no other way to do it. And that's beautiful because that means I get a loop segment there. I get a loop segment there. And I think that must be the same for this one now, mustn't it? Isn't this inside the loop? Because if this is outside the loop, this would have to come through that junction and this would have to come through that junction and they're going to meet in this cell and close the loop. And that's not going to work. So that's certainly a loop segment cell relating to this one, but this one needs to escape around the top. And again, it's exactly the same. Look, for this black cell here, if this was black, both of these loop segments would be forced to come through there. And they can't both come through there without closing the loop. So we must... Well, uh, do I know how? Well, this, yes, that junction is crossed. I don't know whether we enter this, uh, this cell from the north or from the, from the, from the, from a, a, a cell east of it, but I do know it must cross here and that must cut down here. Okay. All right. So at least I'm getting something done. The weird thing is that all of these things I'm getting done are not actually, <laughs> not actually, I'm looking at the clues on the edges, expecting them now to be clearer, but I'm not sure that they are. Um, sorry, okay, I need to think about this now. What on earth am I meant to look at here? Okay, here is a tiny point. That 18 clue at the bottom of column four, imagine that turned. If that turns, in order to reach a count of 18 on the closest loop segment to this, it's gonna to have to be a three cell sequence and that's gonna strand box seven's loop in box seven. It's never going to get to the rest of the grid. So that doesn't turn, which means it continues. Right, and that means that this doesn't turn, because if this turned, it couldn't reach a count of 18 now. So that doesn't turn. It goes in here, which I guess means I can get rid of the circle. We know that doesn't go down. We... Hmm... Oh, wow, this six clue's getting... Gosh, it's getting quite hard for these two six clues in column three to be different now. If they were different, it would have to be that loop segment and that loop segment, which would be quite exciting. Right, here's a point. That clue, which is looking... Oh, I've just had another thought, actually. Oh, this is... I love this puzzle. This is fascinating. Right. That can't be four anymore because that loop set, that border cannot be cut by the loops. So this is a maximum of three now. This one, if this was pointing, if this was pointing west, it would be a zero because there are no loop segments cut or no borders cut in that direction. And it's not a zero because it's a Sudoku digit. If it was pointing uh, east, it would have the same number as this because this is seeing the same number of cuts. So this is seeing north. One, two, three, four, it doesn't actually help me. Um, although does it mean that that one, 
it means this one is not seeing south because if this one was seeing south it would have the same number in it as this one so this one can now only get a maximum of three because it could it could see all of those three cut but that's the most it could see because it can't look south or it would have the same number in it as this clue which we know is looking north i don't think i've got a good way of I don't have a way of showing these little arrows. So I think we're just gonna to have to remember in which direction we work out these arrows are going to point. Oh, ah, right, hang on. In the bottom row now, I need to have a 13 loop segment. And that most certainly is going to add up to more than 13 because six different Sudoku digits add to a minimum of 21. So there is a loop segment somewhere down here which could be just a one cell you know i.e creating a domino that adds up to 13 or it could be two loop segments adding up to 13 but this so this can't continue for too much longer Right, so that means this can't be a three anymore. Because if that's a three, I get that loop segment. And then I don't see how I can make this 13 work anymore. Because I've got to have a, a loop segment down here. So it's going to join like that and it's going to connect and that's not going to work. So, so this cell can't be a three. So this is coming down one or two. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, What about this 18 clue in this column? Do we know? I don't, what I don't think is possible is that this, this 18 is referring to whatever happens when this, if this turns, if this turns, it's not part of the 18. Which me, okay, actually. Yeah, that's impossible. Yeah, so this this is not part of the 18, and sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm drying up a bit as I try and articulate why that's not the case, but let me try and explain. If this was, if that turned and it was part of the 18, it would go three, it would have to go three cells to reach a count of 18. And now this loop segment can't get out of the top left-hand box. There's nowhere for it to connect to. So it would be a line and not a loop. So I don't, so I've got to have a I've got to have three cells at least in a in a row in this column that add up to 18 that don't include this top cell. So if we started from here, we would get it we get at least to this cell. If we started from here, we would get to that cell. Have I stranded loop there? Yeah, I have. Okay, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. And the way I'm seeing that doesn't work, let me color for a moment, is I want to color those cells in. Look at those purple cells and count how many loop ends there are in those eight cells. And the answer is three. There are an odd number of loop segments entering those purple cells. Now, that can only be possible in a loop puzzle if there is another loop segment coming in. We must have an even number of loop segments entering, entering any region because otherwise we're going to have lines, not loops. But we know that there's no loop segment coming through that boundary. There's no loop segment coming in through that boundary because these are, these are, um, these are all outside the loops. We can't cut this boundary. And there's nowhere else for, for us to enter that this this purple region so this does not work this does not work so so this cell 
We can't use this cell in the 18. We've just proved that segment is impossible. And the corollary of that is that a four cell sequence is obviously impossible as well. So it must be exactly a three cell sequence coming, taking in those three cells. And that's, um, that's a text from Mark, but that's fine. So I'm just going to double check if we, if we it must be the same, mustn't it? If I extend this another cell, again, if I highlight my purple cells, I've got three loop ends going in there. Yeah, that doesn't work. Right. So it's these three and that stops, which is then a corner, which must turn. Ooh, now this loop segment must drop down there in order to connect. And what does that mean? I wish I knew. I wish I was in green old Whitley land where beer is cool and hearts are warm. The girl I left behind, perhaps she's missing me like I'm missing her. Du, 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 the games we used to play, but most of all, green old Whitley, most of all, I'm missing you. Um, I wonder if anyone watching this video will know if anyone recognised that, you must comment. <laughs> um, that is a song that used to be in an advert in my youth. I'm not even sure when I watched that advert, I knew what Green or Whitley was. It's a beer. Um, uh, now I've got myself distracted. It's like with the snooker balls yesterday. Don't think about Green or Whitley. Think about the puzzle. Come on, Simon. What's going on? We've had a minor breakthrough. We've had a minor breakthrough, and now our next job is to work out something else. I haven't got a clue. Oh, ah, there's a tiny point. Those two cells add up to 12, look, because of the 12 clue. Oh, so where does this 11 clue go then? The answer is we don't know. It can, no, it can still do. We can still have all sorts of wiggling going on in the middle box, which is very disappointing. That can't be four anymore. Ah, that's a tiny deduction. Because remember this clue, if I remember right, it was looking north. And now that, that moving across there prevents this line segment or this cell border being cut. So one, two, and we can't, uh, we can't go in through there either. So that's, a, so this is a very small number. That is a three. It's not a three or a four, it's a one or a two. So this is a one, two pair. Uh, I'm going to draw in that X there to help me remember what I've just deduced in box five. I mean, what on earth do I look at now? Um, I don't know. <laughs> ah, okay, here's a small point. This 10 clue now is not a three cell sequence because if it was a three cell sequence, uh, it could only have a, a minimum digit of three on it and three plus four plus five is 12, it's not 10. There is a knowledge bomb for you, courtesy of cracking the cryptic. So this is a two cell sequence. Well, it's a, it's a domino that adds up to 10, but I don't know where the domino lives. It's in one of those three places and I know it's either a three seven or a four six. Um, okay. What do we do next? Is there a simple deduction that we can avail ourselves of? What about the 18 at the top of columns? Ah, of course. Sorry. Look, I've got an 18 at the top of column six. If that turns down, then we must complete three cells at least to get to a total of 18 and now I've stranded the loop in the top left of the grid. So that doesn't turn. Wow. So that continues. It doesn't tell us what this does. We, we know it goes through row three, column seven. 
Oh, well, no, it does. It does. That can't wiggle. If it wiggles, those two cells have to add to 18. That's beautiful. So it goes in there. So now we can get rid of the circle. So the, okay, so maybe the 18 is where we concentrate then. Because there must be, it's the same same as on the uh, in column four. There's got to be at least a three cell sequence. So can I do that is my question. I then have to keep these apart because otherwise the loop will close too quickly. I think I can do that, you know. There may be a reason I can't, but I'm not immediately seeing what it is. Um, I mean, if this was true, it would force everything. Look, I'd have to do that. That would all be totally forced. In fact, that would... Oh, that doesn't work. Okay. No, that doesn't work. Um, it's complicated to see that, actually. Perhaps... I'm just wondering if I can prove that a different way. Is there a better way of proving that? Um, I'm not sure is the answer. I, I, I can't see a better way, so I'm just going to explain it the way I've seen it. Okay, if, if this turns up, then it must go... At, it must take in at least three cells to allow this count to exist. Um, oh, no, I'm wrong. No, hang on. I've missed, a, I've missed a trick here. I was assuming this would have to be counting the 18. But no, it doesn't have to, does it? What if that was counting the 18? Ah, no, I'd, I'd missed that as a possibility. So that that is... In fact, that's probably what happens. Although, no, I'm not sure I like that from the point of view of this 20 clue. There's a lot of clutter here that's difficult. This is difficult. Uh, the, actually, I'm now, I'm now coming back to this from a different angle. I'm going to ask, is it possible? Is that loop segment possible in this puzzle? And I'm going to claim no. But the reason is complicated. Again, it's all to do with loop connectivity. If I go for this, we know this is an 18 clue and it's the first vertical cuts we're seeing. So it's the exactly got to correspond to this. So this must extend down again. And the problem here is this 20 clue, which now can't exist in the puzzle. Uh, and the reason for that is where can I put it? Now, I can't put it over here because I still need to put a 12 clue somewhere and that's going to have to be somewhere over there. So this needs this needs to deal with the 20 clue and 20 clue must be at least a three cell sequence, which forces that and closes the loop in the top left. You know, all of this stuff at the top is now connected up somehow and all of this stuff in the stuff in the bottom is a different loop and that won't work. So in fact, what we what we're learning is that that loop segment that cut there is impossible so we can do that and now we might be in business because how do we ever fill this 18 clue now we know it's at least two boundary cuts so that is for that is a forced cut now um, because otherwise we just can't achieve uh, two consecutive boundary cuts in the column in, in the column we could do those two or we could do these two but we must do this one always so so well now the interesting thing is that that can't close like that because if it does this is this hasn't reached a total of 18 yet so it would have to close the loop and that's going to strand another loop in the bottom of the grid. So that's forced. That's forced. This is now in a cul-de-sac and has to escape. We can't close the loop. So we have to do that, 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 and that. Wow. Here we go. We're off to the races here. Now, how do we complete this 20? Because this has to get out. And now this 20 can only exist by turning left. Oh, but now... No, that's wrong. That's wrong. Okay. 
<laughs> it's tricky this. Everything I've done up to there was correct. The thing I've just realised there is, I was trying to think about how I was going to do my 13, but if this closes, although I can make my 20 work, how do I ever do the 13 down here? I can't do it. There's no way of doing it without closing the loop because I can't connect. I, you know, I'm, go I'm going to have to do some wiggling to make it work and there's not enough room to do with the wiggling that's necessary. It, the, the, the twister is not going to work. So in fact, that doesn't close. So it must turn down. Something's got to happen at the bottom here to allow this 13 clue to exist. Oh, oh! Here's here's an interesting point. Here is a, here is a knowledge bomb for you. Eight is a different number to nine, and that being the case is quite interesting because this line segment here, I'm going to argue, is part of an eight clue. I don't know whether it closes there or or not yet, but it's part of an eight clue because were it not to be, we'd have to make that a line segment, and that's going to strand the loop. So this is part of an eight clue. It's either turning here and then this is the eight, or it's connecting here and all three of those is the eight. One of those things is possible. Well, they're both possible, but that means I haven't fit, put, the, put the nine in the column. So the only place nine can go is there. So now if I close that, have I got a problem with my 13? No, that works, doesn't it? That works rather nicely, in fact. Uh, that would make though yeah okay that works sorry I thought maybe that was a problem what about if I extend then then I have to do that and that still works okay bobbins right so I don't I don't know I know those two squares add up to nine but I don't know how this loop all closes in this bottom right hand area ah I've now got a three cell sequence here adding up to eleven and a two cell sequence adding up to twelve. So I've got those squares adding up to 23. Ah, aha, right, we are in business here because we can now turn our attention to the secret in row five. Now the secret is something I only tell my favorite people, but if you're watching this video, you're definitely in my favorite people. Let me explain. Um, the sum of a complete row of a Sudoku grid, indeed a complete column or a complete box, will be the sum of the digits one to nine because the rules of Sudoku tell us we have to put the digits one to nine once each in any row. So this row adds up to 45, but we know that line segment sums to 11, that line segment sums to 12, that gives us 23. And the most I could put into those two squares would be a two, three pair, which gives me another five. So the maximum for those seven digits is 28. Well, What's the most I could ever put into those two squares? Well, it would be an 8-9 pair for 17. So in fact, everything must be maxed out. These must be a 2-3 pair. These must be an 8-9 pair. These, that must be a 5-7 pair because it must add up to 12 and it doesn't use 4-8 or 3-9. Those squares have got to be 1, 4 and 6, which do add up to 11 and are the Sudoku digits we've not put in the row yet. I still haven't got any actual digits, but that's as close as we've come to doing Sudoku so far. Um, now what? <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, I, I really don't. Sorry, I've, 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 I've stopped again, haven't I? These three digits sum up to 20. So this, they've got to be fairly high. Uh, oh dear, come on, Simon. What could I do now? Do I know? I don't. 
got nothing here. <laughs> I, I suppose I know this is a two or a three now. So I've got to cut two or three borders in this. If I, if that's three, then that's going to connect up here. And then the 11 clue in column one is going to have to be at the bottom, which would force. No, I don't know if it will. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether I can force a turn there or not. Wow, okay, so I've got nothing here. I need to think again. Do I know whether these continue? If they stop, if that stops, no, that, that doesn't stop because I have not achieved my 13 here. And I'm going to have, I'm going to have a tiny loop in here to do that. So that they don't stop, they continue. Where now if they stop, I've still got a problem. So I still, I still haven't achieved a 13 string in the bottom row. So that's got to continue. It must turn because it's a loop. Oh, I still don't know. I still don't know how this turns. Ah, oh, that's beautiful though. It's beautiful. Right, I now have got my first digit because I know what that is. And that is because this line segment here now has to turn. I don't know which direction it turns, but it turns. And in turning, it completes the only cell crossing that's achieved by the loop in this row. They can't, we can't achieve a two anymore because once this turns, it creates a corner. So we can't do that. Is that we can't create lollipops. That's not going to work. This turns once. It gives this a count of one. It means that's a two, uh, which it's already seen. I could have probably done it that way, actually. So, because I knew that was looking north, I just hadn't appreciated that it had, it was capped out at two now. Oh, well, I, did, I think I still did it a prettier way, so that's fine. Uh, that's now not a two. Um, whichever way this turns, it's achieving a count of ten. That's really done a remarkably small amount of things for me, hasn't it? What on earth do I do now? Okay, so it's going to have to be one of these outside clues, I reckon. Which one? Which one is the weak one? <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't got a clue. Uh... Can we, can we do something? I don't know what, I've, I just don't know where I'm meant to look here. Uh, I mean, I know, I'm wondering if it's this 17, because I can see that could be a, just a two cell sequence. And it almost looks like this eight, nine is trying to rule that out, but I don't think it is. I don't think it does rule it out. I mean, um, in fact, it's almost forced that that is the case, because if it doesn't do that, then how do we get this 17 to work? We can't connect those up. That's too long a sequence to add up to 17. Oh, I see. We could do that, maybe. One, two, three, four, five cells adding up to 17. That would be massive if that's true, because that cell also has to be a relatively low number. So those would have to be a one, two, three, four, five, six, six tuplet. Um, oh yeah, have, oh, hang on, I've got this eight here, haven't I? Right, so that's almost putting pressure on this digit. If that's a three cell sequence, it's going to have to contain a one and either a two, five or a three, four. That's a relatively low number as well. Oh, hang on. Have I got enough low numbers then that I can rule this out from being a three cell sequence? If that's three cells, 
those six out. No, it's I think I think the maths is just okay, isn't it? I can make those six cells add up to more than 21 by making sure that this is a relatively high number. And if that's a relatively high number, it's counting. Yeah, maybe it can get to a high number if it if it if it's counting this way. If it's counting north, it can only get to a maximum of three. Well, no, actually only maximum of two line. Oh, hang on a minute. If this is looking north, we could connect those up, but it's only seeing two border crossings in that direction. So, but in this direction, one, two. Oh, it can never be a five. That cannot be a five. Because to, for it to be a five, one, two two three there aren't there just aren't five. Oh, i see i think i must have labeled this as a five because i had seen the possibility of that loops that that border crossing that does not exist anymore um but also i don't think this can be four because if that's four then this 12 clue is impossible because we've got the 20 there i need to put something there to get my 12 clue in so I can't just connect this up. So I pick up two maximum north, three maximum west. So that is low. And now I think there's a problem here because I wanted that to be high in order to achieve. Well, when I say a problem, I suspect that means this has to turn. If those three digits add up to eight, and those two digits add up to nine, and that digit is, is a maximum, let's make it three, then those six digits I've just highlighted have a maximum size of 20, and six, the triangular number for six is 21, six plus five plus four plus three plus two plus one, so that doesn't work. So that means this has to turn, and we know it doesn't close there or we get two loops, so it must go up, it must go there, it must go there, I want to have, right, this is huge. This is absolutely huge. It's beautiful as well, isn't it? Now look at this. That is the 17 clue. So those six cells there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Well, I mean, actually, let me just think about this. Well, again, again, what I'm thinking here is that the triangular number for six is 21. And I know these are adding up to 17. So this has got to be a four or a five in order to make these six cells add up to enough. And the only trouble with that is that this is not picking up four cell, four border cuts to the south, is it? Even if that twist, it's only got two. So it's, so it's in fact, it's looking at this line. So all we have to do is fill this digit in with however more border cuts there are there with one, two, three, there are four. So that's four, which means that this is, this is minimumed. Uh, it didn't have to be minimumed. I think I th before I thought it had to be when I highlighted all those six cells and I said it was going to be a six duplet. That was not correct. I didn't realize that that could have been a five at that point, And I think that would have given the opportunity for this to be higher. But, but it does, in fact, because this can't be higher than four, the maximum size of those is 21 now, which means these digits are one, two, three, five and six. And that means that's a seven, eight or a nine. Those are seven, eight or a nine. And that's going to mean other things as well. At the moment, I can do something to do with Sudoku, I expect. Ah. Ah, hang on. This four is a. Well. You can't now have two sections of line in column three that both sum to six, because if you did, they would have to be two, four and one, five, and four is no longer available. So there is only one line segment in this column, and it's that one. 
So that must be a 5, that must be a 1, that must be a 7. There is now no line segment here because we could we simply couldn't make it work. Oh, and the corollary of that, of course. Hang on, I might have made a mistake. <laughs> I want to come back. I've, I've just thought of something else that might be possible. What if this turned? No, that's it. No, I think it's. I think I am correct. I was suddenly thinking, could that be six? And then this somehow would have a totally different total other than six, but it can't be because this needs to. This needs to see a six from this direction, and we've worked out it can't see that because if it saw that, then from this direction that would also have to be a six, or this would also have to be a six, and it couldn't be because of the four. So I think the logic was good. I just needed to sort of clarify it in my brain. So I think I think both these sixes are looking at a single line segment, which is this one. So I think we can restore that pencil mark without being incorrect. And now not only can we do that, we can also do this, of course, which means that that must continue. I must get a 12 clue in, so I have to do a wiggle. And not sure what that means, but it's very exciting. It means that what does it mean? It must mean ah, okay, that's not a four anymore because that's two cell sequences adding up to eight. Whoopsie. So this is not four. So this is either seven or two, depending on what this digit is. There's definitely, ooh, right, there's definitely a four in one of those two cells by Sudoku now, so that neither of those cells is able to be a four. So these are down to ones, twos, and threes, but we don't know in which direction they look. No, I mean, I don't think, I really don't think we do. So we're gonna have to hold off on how that works. I'm desperately looking. I'm, I mean, there must be something obvious now because I feel like we've done an immense amount of, or we've made an immense amount of progress towards understanding how the puzzle works. Um, ah, okay. Those three digits sum to 18 and that's a seven. So those two digits sum to 11, so that can't be a one. Um, that is the world's worst deduction, isn't it? So this is nine, eight, five or six. It literally, I think it, I think it has all of those options available. Ow! Um, this 12 strand here is not five, seven. So it's either four, eight or three, nine. That means that those three digits in that box contain the digits 8 and 9, because that's an 8 or a 9, and there must be an 8, 9 in that domino. Oh, that's an interesting one. Right, look at column 1. Previously, I'd thought it was possible for this bottom strand to add up to 11. That doesn't work anymore, because I can't put a 1 in that sequence. And if I can't put a one in that sequence, its minimum sum would be two, three, four, and five, which is 14, not 11. So there is a sequence up here that adds up to 11. Right, and that means this is not a three, because if that's a three, we're doing that line segment and we never get into column one at all, because we have to turn that way to close the loop. So that's huge. That gives me a two here, a three here. Three here is interesting. Which way is that looking? Well, that's not a three. Where is this three looking? That's only two, isn't it? That's only two. Oh, no, it could be looking. Uh, sorry, it's also going to pick up that. If it looks west, it gets one, two, three. So it doesn't. For I was thinking maybe it forces this to close down here. And it would do if it was pointing down, but we don't know whether it is or not. Wow. I mean, how does this, how does this finish now? 
two, three. Um, I wish I knew. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to get me singing my Green or Whitley song again. No, don't don't get distracted, Simon. Come on. What do we do next? I don't have a clue for that line segment, so that's not going to help me. I've looked at the eight clue. I know those two add up to nine, but I don't think that's restricted. Do oh, is maybe the 18 clue here. Is there some way of concluding that that's got to be four cells rather than three? I mean, it would have, we'd have a lot of low digits in that sequence. I don't think it's impossible, though. What about... Well, that's interesting. If that's a three, how do we achieve that? Because there's only two to the south. So if that's a three, it's got to be all three of those. Does, is that possible? Does that work? No, because that two... Oh, that's lovely. Okay, if that's a three, the only way it can get three, three border crossings is like that. And now this two clue can't work because there's no, there aren't two... This, this line segment going across there takes out this line segment crossing and this line segment crossing and it only leaves one behind which is that one so this two clues broken that's gorgeous right so that's a one so that yeah so that is looking west again isn't it because there's there's two if we go downwards those two are not available so this is seeing one line crossing in this direction those two squares are not a one that's not a one, that's not a one, so this is two or four now. But it's seeing one, two, it's seeing three at the moment to the south. Oh yes, that's it, that's it, that's beautiful. Because, okay, so what is the, the this is the question, what is the clue, which direction is the arrow for this clue? Now we know if it was looking to the west, which is one possibility, it should have the same number as this because that is not a, a cutter. There's no line cut there. And this is not a one and it wouldn't be a one anyway because it was, would break Sudoku. So this is looking south where at the moment it's picking up three. Well, it can't be a three, so it must be a four. And that forces the line to close. There we go. Um, I'm sure that's doing more magic than that as well. I just can't see what quite how it tallies up. Ah! Um, or maybe, maybe the thing that does is affects the 18 clue down here, which is now which is now known to only be three cells large. This square is not a one. I'm just seeing, so that's a two or a three. It's probably it could be looking south and be two. How does it become a three? That's a good question. How does that ever be? A th how is that ever a three? If it's looking east, it sees one. If it's looking north, it sees zero. If it's looking south, it sees two. And if it's looking west, we can see two maximum. So that is two maximum. That's a two. I was going to say that makes this a three, but I hadn't seen that this could also be a one still. Um. But, and also, this being a 2 is not telling us which direction it's pointing in. It is giving us that digit. That's a 7. That's a 1. This is now a 4, 6 pair. This is now no longer a 1. That's not a 3 by Sudoku. Does that help us? The answer is that, oh, well, that 4, 6 pair means that's not a 6. So that's not a 5 because those had to, I remember these had to add up to 11. Okay. And what does that mean, if anything? I don't know. <laughs> no, it's already a long video. Um... Ah, okay, that's not a one. So do I know what this one's looking at? 
Is it two or a three? Yes, I, yes, I do. That's fascinating. Right. This is looking at that, isn't it? Because it sees zero line segments, horizontal line cuts to its east. It sees one south, but it can't be a one. It sees one north, but it can't be a one. So it's looking this way where it sees one, two, three. So that is a three, which means that's not a three. That's that's actually a bit disappointing. Oh, chance for a three in the corner up there, though, because I don't think beyond this being a three, it's done very much for me. Can that be a three? Yes, actually, that can be a three if it's looking north and that twists. Goodness me. Right. Um, right, Sudoku. Let's do Sudoku. One in this box. I don't know where it goes. Oh, no, I do. One, one. I, I do. One goes in the corner by Sudoku. So now that's a one by Sudoku. There's a one in one of two places. Ah, not here. Because of the 13 clue. You can't put 12 into that cell. So I get a one here. So there's now a one in one of those two cells. And what about the one in the middle box? One of these two cells, I think. Can I put one on the 18? Only if this is an 8-9 pair. No, no. If that was a 1, the 20 clue would be broken. I can't make these two cells add up to 19. So the 1 does go there, which means that's a 1. Now let's look at this. Which way is this looking? Oh, it's here. It could just be looking west very simply. So in fact it is. It's looking west at those cells. Oh dear, that's annoying. Okay. This is a two clue. Does that help me? I don't know. <laughs> um, I've got to fit in an 11 somewhere up here. I don't know if there's a clue I've not used. There probably is, but I don't see where it is. All right, so what could I do now? I could argue about seven in this box by Sudoku goes there. there there's a little thing we can do. That's not unwelcome, is it? So that means six in this box is up here which means six in this box is in one of three places. The, ooh, okay, this is now a four, five pair. It can't be one, eight, can't be three, six, can't be two, seven. So that is four, five. And that's interesting for the 10 clue look because the 10 clue can't be five, five. So that's four, that's six, that's five. That's not five anymore. That's not six anymore. Um, now has that helped that's not two anymore I'm now seeing just by a bit of Sudoku that's not two anymore ah so can I improve on that anymore Near, it's not far off is it that six is giving me a six and a four up here which means that's not six ah. which means I've got a three five pair now so that's not three which means that's not eight so we know those are adding up to 11. So this has come right down now to 5 or 9. Um, can we improve upon that? Probably. I don't quite know how. I think it's going to have to be something to do with how the loop closes in the sort of northwest corner of the grid. Um... Four is almost restricted in box six. These three digits are adding up to 20 without... Right, so they're not... They must have a nine on them, mustn't they? Because if they don't have a nine on them, 
the maximum they could be would be 865 because the 7 isn't available and 8, 6 and 5 add to 19. So there is a 9 on that sequence which means there's no 9 over there which means this is 4, 8, this is 9, this is 8, that's not 8, that's not 9. If this is 4, 8, oh, so now this is getting challenging actually to make this add up because I can't use 8 or 7 now. So I must use six, must, it must be nine, six, five. It's the only way it can add up. That's huge. Well, I say, is it huge? It's, it's probably interesting at least. That must be five, six, nine. That's not six, that's not five. Therefore, that's not six. What digits have we got left, left to put in this row? Twos and threes. So that must be a three. That must be a two, which is making this a four. And that therefore is something else. Did that do it? Has that really helped us? So two is in one of two places in box nine. One of three places in box three. Um, that's a five, six or a nine. I think it can still be all of those things. I don't believe it. That felt like it was gonna be the, the key. Oh, I see, now this 13 can't have a two on it because that would be an 11. Okay, so the two goes there. The two goes in one of two positions over here. This is not four, nine or five, six. So that is a six, seven pair. Wow. Let's put six, seven in the centers, which we, we don't know the order of. And that must be an eight, nine pair, which we do know the order of, which gives me a seven here, an eight here and a nine here by Sudoku, which gives me an eight here and a four here. Aha. That's better, isn't it? So these squares are a three and a six, which feels like it should be resolved, but I don't see how. So that gives me a five, nine pair as well. I've not put, what's the digit I've not put into this row? Why has my scanning deserted me so badly? Eight, that has to be eight. That's three, that's, that's three, that's five using this three here. Uh, so three, drops down there it suddenly it's become like a sudoku it's very very disconcerting four sevens and nines into these squares i don't know whether any of these are affected by maths perhaps no i don't think any of them are okay so let's get rid of the six corner pencil mark there and take another stare and try and work out what the next trick is going to be. Oh, here's an 18 clue that's got a six in it. So this has got to be a seven or a three to make these add up to 12. Well, that's, that's now doable. That's got to be seven, that's got to be five. So that's got to be five, that's got to be nine. That's looking interesting. In fact, that's a seven, that's a six at the bottom here. Which means up here, We've now got to put a three, five pair. But this nine means that's got to be a two because I still remember those who two had to add up to 11. So that's six, that's six, that's nine. At the top of this column, we need a, I don't know, is it a nine? Yeah, it's a nine. So that's not nine anymore. In fact, that is seven by Sudoku using the seven, the power of sevenage. Come on. I think we're getting there now. It feels like it's slowly, it's, 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 it's now sort of deigning to reveal its secrets to us. Um, these squares are an eight, nine pair, and we can do those. Uh, nine, eight, eight, two. So these squares are a four, six pair, and we can do that. I've not been checking um, any of these totals. I've just been relying on Sudoku, it feels, for a while. That's not five. And therefore, so which, which, which things have I not kept track of? Probably many. Oh, okay. The 11 clue over here. Oh, look, that could be 11. 3, 8 could be 11. I, yeah, I still haven't closed my loop. That's something that we probably need to address fairly soon, isn't it? Nine, three, five. 
2, 3, 5, 7. So this square here is a 2 or a 3 only. But probably I'm going to have to work out... Yeah, I'm probably going to have to work out how the loop closes, I think. Yeah, okay, in fact it's obvious now I think about it. How could the loop turn up here? That's a good question. Well, I say that and I've suddenly noticed that it could do, it could split like that and do a wiggle like that. Now, why does that break? And that would make this square a three. Wow. Okay, sorry, I, I thought I thought I could break this by saying it can't do that because I was noticing if it did that, the only way of getting the 11 clue done would be to include the one in the corner. So I suppose if it doesn't do that for its two, we, we know two of the three borders in, we know that there's three borders to cut cross and we know that it's not those two. So if it's not those two, it must be this one. But what we don't know is, is where the other one is at the moment. So if we then, if we then come here, then we could do a wiggle here. Now, does that break for some reason? I, th I can see this can be 8-3 in that example. I don't know. I'm sort of worried that I've... Oh, no. Right. That... Do right. Okay. Gosh. It, it's so clever, the way this is put together. It really is. Remember... And you, you'll be uh, um, forgiven for forgetting this, because I did. This clue, where is that pointing? It's a one clue. We know it's point, not pointing south. There's no, it can't be pointing east or north. It's pointing in this direction, which means that this needs to, this needs to turn. Well, it can't turn that way, so it's going to have to turn that way. It's going to have to go up. We haven't achieved our two here. So it does do that. And that's beautiful because that gives me a three here, a two here, six here. And now oh no, that's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. I think we had one of those yesterday as well. Look at that. That's And then suddenly all of the digits can flow into the grid. Good grief. Now, and now does it just finish because of Sudoku? Because we've just finished the loop. We've got 11 there. We've got the correct number here. This is looking west and sees one loop segment. I think it looks good. So two, five, and seven. This is a five. That's got to be a seven. That's got to be a two. Uh, so in this column, we need four and six, I think, which we can, again, we can do that. That finishes the four and the nine. I've not put nine in this box. I still haven't put three and eight over here either. So eight, three, three goes there we need five and eight to finish so if i haven't made a ricket you can see that fills in like that what a brilliant puzzle that's startlingly clever i'm going to click yay did it did it castle woku has been has been completed that is a brilliant it's 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 just staggeringly clever i don't know how you keep all of those constraints in your mind as a constructor this is such that you can you know you can create a logical path that even at the end has that beautiful logic in it using both the one and the two and the directions we had to have deduced they were facing in order to complete the the loop up here in a way that was unambiguous and sort of um fixed the rest of the sudoku it's stunning it is another triumph um these hybrid puzzles where the people are marrying up um logic prob problems with sudoku they're getting ridiculously clever i mean the whole fistimafel hunt was themed around that by the way um 
but but this castle wall and i think it was yagelin that vesseled it last time it's it's just take about again let me know in the comments how you got on sorry it's a slightly longer video it was a slightly complicated puzzle but it was magnificent and we'll be back later with another edition of cracking the cryptic